MapReduce Introduction MapReduce is a programming model and an associated implementation for processing and generating large data sets. Users specify a map function that processes a key value pair to generate a set of intermediate key value pairs and a reduce function that merges all intermediate values associated with the same intermediate key. Many real world tasks are expressible in this model. Programs written in this functional style are automatically parallelized and executed on a large cluster of commodity machines. The runtime system takes care of the details of partitioning of the input data, scheduling the program's execution across the set of machines, handling machines failures and managing the required intermachine communication. This allows the programmers without any experience with parallel and distributed systems to easily utilize the resources of a large distributed systems. A typical map reduce computation processes may have the data of terabytes of data on thousands of machines. Hundreds of map reduce programs have been implemented and upward of 1000 map reduce jobs are executed on a Google's cluster every day. Meaning to say that a very large data set computation which cannot be handled using the classical algorithms or the existing machines, how are they going to be computed and how the Google is now doing it that we are going to see in this lecture. So, the Google has devised a programming paradigm which exploits the cluster machines. So, using exploitation of the cluster machines, the distribution of a large data set into small chunks on different nodes which are distributed across the clusters on different nodes will be used to compute. So, how the computation, how the programmer will write down those programs. So, Google has given this particular paradigm which is called a map reduce paradigm or a programming paradigm which will allow the programmers to comfortably write the programs for their application without bothering the intricacies of underlying distributed system and the distribution of program or distribution of data programs and also how the communication is going to take place. All these interdependencies or intricacies are purely hidden and an abstraction is available that is in the form of a map reduce. So, in this particular lecture we are going to introduce you this particular notion and we are going to give you several examples based on that. So, let us see the model or the architecture which is going to be used for map reduce programming. So, this is a single node architecture where it consists or it is having one CPU, CPU memory and, and a disk. This particular node collection of such nodes we are going to form a cluster and that will be commodity cluster if the normal machines like laptops and the desktops are used then it is called commodity cluster. So, web data sets can be very large tens to the thousands of terabytes. So, standard architectures which are emerging to accommodate the large data sets large data sets are like cluster of commodity nodes gigabit ethernet interconnect will be used in it how to organize the computation in this architecture. So, this is an example of a cluster architecture. So, earlier we have seen one such node. So, several such nodes which are connected through a switch and further another switch will connect the complete 
set of different nodes. So, a node of 1000, a cluster of a 1000 nodes is also available for this particular computation. So, these switches are a very fast switch and InfiniBand switch is a gigabit switch or a gigabit internet is used for a very high speed interconnect across these nodes. So, this is an architecture for the cluster which consists of 64 nodes shown here in this particular figure. So, given this particular architecture how a program can be written which will exploit this kind of architecture. So, a large data set can be stored and can be computed which is now not possible to be utilized with the single node. So, this is the current state of the art which the Google and other big companies are now using it. So, we are going to see this new technology. So, to utilize this cluster architecture we require something which is called a distributed file system which we have already covered in the previous lectures. So, distributed file system will provide a single abstraction of a system to the programmer and that will be in the form in the form of Google file system and Hadoop's SDFS file system and Cosmic's KFS which will give the global file name space. So, typical usage patterns is uh, it is able to accommodate huge files that is hundreds of terabytes and data is rarely updated in place and reads and appends are very common operations when we are dealing with the large data set. These commodity nodes they also are failing. So, obviously, the norm failure is becoming a norm in such kind of commodity clusters. So, how can we store these particular store and compute these data persistently? So, we assume there is a distributed file system like Google file system or SDFS file system is in place which will ensure the stable storage that is the faults are fault tolerance systems are already in place within that particular system and the failures and faults will be handled accordingly. Distributed file system comprises of file chunk servers, master nodes and a client library for file access. Chunk servers is nothing but where the files is split into a contiguous chunks and they are being stored. So, each chunk is of size 64 MB. So, each chunk is replicated three times and try to keep these replicas on a different racks of the cluster. So, the rack in a cluster consists of or stores more than one nodes and this is being interconnected with the fast switch. So, this is called a rack which is located at in one unit. So, motivation for MapReduce is to support the large scale data processing which otherwise is not possible on a single node or on a supercomputer because they have the finite space and finite computing power. Now, if we are considering a cluster, a big cluster of 1000 nodes which has the storage and processing capabilities. Now, how can this particular cluster of a very big cluster can be utilized to store the data and to compute the data? 
and what will be the programming model for the programmers without dealing with the intricacies. So, we are going to see that environment programming environment which is called MapReduce which will be used for a large scale data processing. So, here the programs are quite simple, but the data is very large. So, that becomes a challenge how a very large program can be computed. The MapReduce architecture will provide automatic parallelization and the distribution of the large data sets. It also ensures the fault tolerance, why because the nodes can fail at any point of time and IO scheduling is also required and monitoring and status updates how that is all done in that particular architecture. So, programming model the computation takes a set of input key value pairs and produces a set of output key value pairs. So, the user of a map reduced library expresses the computation as two functions which is called a map and the other function is called a reduce. So, map function is written by the user takes the input pair and produces the intermediate key value pairs. The map reduce library groups together all the intermediate values associated with the same intermediate keys and passes them to the next phase that is the reducer phase. Meaning to say that the input is in the form of a key value pair where the map function will be applied on this particular data set this is going to generate an intermediate key value pair which is grouped together with the group together so that all the intermediate values associated with the same intermediate key i is now being passed same key and there is a list of values these are passed to the to the reducer and that will give an output again in the form of a key value pair so the key value so, so, the key value using the key value pair the map reduce functions for word count is given in this particular manner. We can see there is a function which is called a map which will take key value pair. The map will read each word which is given as a part of the value and for each word it emits one. Similarly, as far as the reducer is another program which programmer has to write down which is based on the output or the output of the mapper is called the intermediate results and this intermediate values are taken by the reducer to produce the final output that is in the form of a key value pair. So, we will explain this particular example further in this lecture. So, map reduce functions as I told you that input will be in the form of a set of key value pairs. So, the user has to supply two different functions map and reduce based on the application which they have in the mind. So, the mapper 
based on the input set of key value pairs it will form a list of key value pairs and it will group according to a particular key all the values and that will be given to the reducer so reducer will take the key and all group values as the input for the reducer and it will generate an output which will be the key value pair again the values based on a particular key so output again will be that key k1 and its value k2 will be the output so key value pair will be the output so this is a simple explanation that map reduce function provides this simple construct constructs of map and reduce now programmer has to fill in what is the map and what is the reducer reduce functions as per the application is concerned let us see different applications where this map reduce paradigm or a model of programming is going to be used there are few simple applications of interesting programs that can easily be expressed as map reduce computations distributed grep count of all access frequency reverse web link graph term vector per host and so on inverted index distributed sort let us see the implementation so many different implementations of the map reduce interface are provided are possible the right choice depends on the environment for example one implementation may be suitable for a small shared memory machine and another for a large numa multiprocessor and yet another machine for even bigger collection of networked machines here we describe an implementation targeted to the computing environment which is in wide use at google so google large clusters of commodity pcs connected together through a fast ethernet switch so this is the description of the cluster machine that we have already explained let us consider the distributed environment or distributed execution which basically takes place on invocation of map and reduce functions so the map invocations are distributed across multiple machines by automatically partitioning the input data into the set of m splits the input splits can be processed in parallel by different machines that is all taken care when the map is invoked reduce function is invoked that is called reduce invocations here that the distributed these reducers uh, re reduce invocations are distributed by partitioning the intermediate key space into r pieces using the partitioning function which is nothing but a hash function on the mod r so number of partitions r and the number and the partitioning functions are specified by the user figure shows the overall flow of the map reduce operations so this is going to be a distributed execution now the user program is in the form of different threads so three different processes here it is shown will be created and the first one is a special process which is called a master and all other processors all other processes will be assigned either the map function or the reduce function so the map function will on a particular worker the map function will will take the input in the form of a splits input is a big file which is splitted into some multiple of chunks which can be stored on a different nodes so these splits of large data set as which is given as an input in the form of a input file is a split so here it is shown as three splits so three splits means three workers will be reading it in parallel 
and applying the map function on these splits. Then afterwards, the next step is that the output of the map function will be written locally or that is being buffered locally. Then as far as these intermediate key value pairs are concerned, so these values which are read from the local buffer and then basically they are grouped together. on the same key. So, for a particular key all the values which are being grouped they are being given now to the server. So, sir, so to the to the worker which basically will be running the reduce functions. So, the reducer which is running on a worker will remote read before performing read it will do a sort also. So, that means for a particular key all the list of values that means according to the key it will be sorted and all the values for a particular for a particular key this particular values will be given in the form of a list to the reducer. So, reducer will perform the reduce functions on that particular intermediate key and its corresponding list of values and the same program will happen on another worker. So, it depends upon how many workers are there this particular data will be now targeted on this particular worker. So, it depends upon the hash function on a particular key and this hash will be uh, divided into r different workers this is r 1 r 2. So, it will be something mod r. So, the hash that means these intermediate values which are coming they are to be hashed on a on a worker of size r with using mod r. So, that is we have explained here in the reducer invocation by partitioning the input intermediate key space into r pieces using partitioning function hash key mod r. So, r different partitions of the intermediate values will will now takes place and each partition is given to the worker. So, the how many workers are assigned with a reducer program is fixed by r. So, so many that means the intermediate key value pair is partitioned further into r splits and they are being assigned to the reducer in this particular form. So, the partitioning is done at two levels one is at the input data the other partitioning is done for the for the intermediate values. So, after applying the reducer on each different partition it will produce an output file in the form of the key value pairs. So, this sequence of action whatever I have explained through the figure is again going to be explained. So, the when a user program calls the map reduce function the following sequence of action occurs first action says that the map reduce library in the user program first splits the input file into m pieces of typically 64 MB. If you recall 64 MB is the size of the chunk then it it then starts up many copies of the program on a cluster machine. So, the first step is over once the input is a split. Now, one of the copies of the program is a special that is called a master and the rest of the workers are assigned by the master. There are m map task and r reduce task to assign. 
so the map picks the ideal workers and assign one map task and one reduce task so that is what i have explained that user program will create the threads one thread will be master and all other threads will be assigned the worker job and these workers will be assigned either to do a map task or basically to do the reduce task so the worker who is assigned the map task reads the contents of the corresponding input split it parses key value pairs out of the input data and passes each pair of user defined map function so the map function will generate the intermediate key value pairs and that is buffered in the memory periodically the buffered pairs are written to the local disk then they are partitioned into r regions by a partitioning function that i have explained which is nothing but an hashing with a mod r so the locations of these buffered pairs on the local disk are passed back to the master who is responsible for forwarding these locations to the reduce workers so the information about partitioning of intermediate values is basically given to the to the master and when a reduce worker is notified by the master about these locations it uses remote procedure call to read the buffer data from the local disks of the map workers when a reduce worker has read all the intermediate data it sorts it by the intermediate keys so that all the occurrences of the same key are grouped together that i have also explained before giving the intermediate split to the to the reducer sorting is needed because typical many different keys keys map to the same reduce task if the amount of intermediate data is too large to fit in the memory then external sorting is used sixth step says that the reduce workers iterates over the sorted intermediate data and for each unique intermediate key and counter it passes the key and the corresponding set of intermediate values to the users the reduce function the output of the reduce function is appended to the output file for this reduce partition when all the map task and reduce have been completed the master wakes up the user program at this point the map reduce call in the user program return back to the user code so after successful completion the output of the map reduce execution is available in our output files one per reduce task with the file names specified by the user typically users do not need to combine these r output file into one file they often pass these file as input to another map reduce call or use them from another distributed application that is able to deal with the input that is partition into multiple files so here let us go into more details of the master data structure the master keeps several data structures for each map task and reduce task it stores the state that is idle in progress or completed and the identity of the worker machine for non idle tasks so you know that master has the complete global view of all the workers and so the states of all the processes are maintained and also the identity of the worker machines because they are going to be used in this particular computation so the master is the conduit through which the location of the intermediate regions is propagated from map task to the reduce task therefore each completed map task the master stores the location and sizes of r intermediate file regions produced by the map task that we have already explained updates to this location and size information are received as the map tasks are completed the information is pushed incrementally to the workers that have in progress reduced task now another aspect is called fault tolerance since map reduce library is designed to help process very large amount of data using hundreds of thousands of machines the library must tolerate machine failures gracefully when a map worker fails so the map task completed or in progress at the worker are reset to the idle reduce worker are notified when the, when the task is rescheduled on another worker reduce worker failure only in progress task are reset to the idle master 
failure so map reduce task is aborted and the client is notified so if the master is failed then the entire setup is aborted and the client is notified locality network bandwidth is relatively scarce resource in the computing environment we can conserve the network bandwidth by taking advantage of the fact that input data is stored on a local disk of the machines that can make up our cluster gfs divides each file into 64 mb chunks and stores several copies of each block that is three copies on different machines so map reduce master takes the location information of the input into input into the information and attempt to schedule the map task on the machines failing that attempt to schedule map task near the replica of the task input when running the large map reduce operation on a significant fraction of the workers in a cluster most input is read locally and consumes no network bandwidth so the next task is so task granularity so the map phase is subdivided into m pieces and reduce phase in r pieces ideally m and r should be much larger than the number of workers nodes so here there are the bounds practical bounds on how large m and r can be that can be a granularity so granularity is mentioned here as a that the uh, there's a master must take order m plus r scheduling decisions and keeps order m star m multiplied by r state in the machine in the memory further r is often constrained by the users because the output of each reduce task ends in a separate output file so partition function that i have already discussed ordering guarantees are also taken care of so and combiner function is also we have discussed let us go ahead with few examples the first example is called word count so if a, if a document is given and we are going to count how many frequency or what is the frequency of a particular word that is called a word count and how this is going to be used using map reduce program let us explain through this illustrative example so let us say this file contains these words c bob run c spot throw when it is given to the map function so map s in the function you see that after for each word each word is parsed and then it will do an emit with one so c will be emitted with the value one bob will be emitted with the value one run is emitted so all the all the words they are called key they will be emitted with the value one so this is a key and this is a value so this particular output will be generated as the intermediate results now these intermediate results will be sorted according to the keys for example c how many two times c is there so it will go to the one worker with a reduce function this reduce function on it similarly bob will have another worker and run will also have another worker and spot is also another worker and throw is also another worker so just see that as far as c is concerned c will output two y because it will just add both of them so here you see that it will sum all ones in this list so in this list there are two times one is coming so c will be output as two whereas bob is only one occurrence so bob will be output as bob one run also will do the same thing spot also and throw also so just see that output also is in the form of a key value pair so input was the document and the output is the key value pair so you just see that the word count has happened so for every word how many the frequency of that particular word in the document that is being counted using map reduce program now another program we are going to see that is 
for counting words of different length for example and or so and is of length 3 or is of length 2 and so on so we have to count how many how many words of length 3 are appearing in the document how many words of length 2 are appearing in the document so for that we are going to write down a map reduce function so the map function takes the value and output the key value and outputs the key colon value pair so first key will be output key will be output and its corresponding value will be will be given So, for instance, if you define the map function that takes the string and, and outputs the length of the word as the key and the word itself as the value. So, if we give map to Steve, this particular map will return the length of this particular word as a key and the value will be the word itself. So, this particular map function will emit for a word in the document it will emit the length of the word colon the word itself and this is basically the output so this will allow us to run the map function against the values in parallel and it provides a huge advantage let us see what happens so if a file is given with these words so the map function will output in this form this is basically the length of the key this is the key value pair this is the output of the map function. Now, once this is given as an output of the map function, then they are grouped according to the key values. So, you see that this is in the sorted order for to group according to the keys values. We have to do the sorting according to the key. So, this particular list is sorted according to the key. Now, then we are going to group the same keys and the list of words we are going to generate like this. So, for the value for the key 3, here this is the list of words. For the key 4, this is the list of words. For key 5, these two are the list of words and for key 8 these are the two list of words. These list of words this is an intermediate data which is basically given to the reducer for each key there will be a reduce function and this will count that is all how many elements are there in that particular list. So, for 3 it will say 3, for 4 it will say 3, for 5 it will say 2, for 8 it will output 2. That means, the words of length 3, there are 3 frequency is 3 that means 3 times it is appearing, the length of word 4 how many times they are appearing is 3 times and so on. So, this was the example of a map reduce programs. So, that is what we have explained that using map and reduce function you can solve a bigger problems also. Let us take another problem as an example which will find out the friends using map reduce programming paradigm. So, finding friends, Facebook has a list of friends, note that the friends are the bidirectional thing on the Facebook. So, if I am your friend, you are mine. So, they ha also have a lot of disk space and they serve 
hundreds of millions of requests every day. They have decided to pre-compute the calculation when they can to reduce the processing time of the request. So one common processing request is the you and Zo have 230 friends in the common feature. So when you visit someone's profile, you see the list of friends that you have in common. This list doesn't change frequently, so it would be wasteful to recalculate it every time you visit the profile. So we are going to use this MapReduce function to so that we can calculate everyone's common friend once in a day and store these results. So later on it, just a quick lookup, we can use it and this will save a lot of disk space and it's a cheap also and so let us see how MapReduce can can be used to find out the common friends. So let us assume the friends are stored in this particular form, the, the, the person and having a list of friends. This is given as an input to the program. So this is the person and then followed by the list of friends. Now let us see what next, how the map and reduce function will do. So map function will take this particular person and its friend list and will emit that particular person with a pair, one of these friends and so on. So that way there are three friends, then the map function will emit for each word in friend list. What it will do? It will emit let us say person is A and W. So this way and followed by that list, it will emit. So it will emit A, B, B, C, D, then it will emit A, C, then B, C, D, then it will emit A, D, B, C, D. Similarly for person B with a list A, C, D, E, it will emit A, B, so order is to be changed here, note that A comes before B in the key, so A, B, then same list, then B, C, then same list of persons, B, D and so on. So for all persons, this particular map will emit this key value pair. Now let us see what happens next. Now before we send this key value pair to the reducer, we group them by their key and get these values. So here you see that this is one group, this is another group, another group. So all pairs will be in a separate group. So the reducer what it will do, it will take the intersection of these two list. So it will generate A, B followed by the intersection. So the intersection is C, D. Similarly here in A, C, it will generate, if you take the intersection, B and D will come and so on. So each line will be passed as an, arg as an argument to the reducer and the reduce function will simply do the intersection of the list of these values and hence they will output the common friends between two people. So when A visits another person's site that is B's site, then they can, then he can find out that 
C and D is a common friends between A and B this way. So, with these three different examples, we are sure that we can solve the data processing large data set computing using map and reduce functions and Google is also running several such programs daily every day. Now, further reading on this particular topic, you can refer this particular reference which is the map reduce simplified data processing on a large clusters and that is available on the Google site. Conclusion, the map reduce programming model has been successfully used at the Google for many different purposes. The model is easy to use even for the programmers without experience with parallel and distributed systems since it hides the details of parallelization, fault tolerance, locality, optimization and load balancing. A variety of problems are easily expressible as map reduce computation. For example, map reduce is used for the generation of data for the Google's production web search service for sorting, for data mining, for machine learning and many other systems. Thank you.